All right, welcome everybody. Just joining us, we have 58 participants on the line. People are going to be trickling in as uh, as the time goes on, and you know, let's shoot for our target of 100. So make sure you are inviting your teammates, you know, your colleagues, sending out your emails and your texts to make sure you let them know that we have Bill Predeman on the line today. And uh, if you haven't heard Bill's backstory, you're new to the call. You know, before getting started with Renatus, Bill was actually a pro skier in Vail, Colorado for over 10 years. Um, and he realized that he was not qualified to do much else and felt that he was unemployable. Um, he, you know, then got into the franchise industry, but due to a lack of business or lack of knowledge, this ended up costing him his entire business and he lost everything. But he kept pushing forward. In 2007, he had just heard about real estate investing, but didn't have the education or the knowledge to do it, and still was bold enough to try it on his own, but ended up again, you know, he was over, you know, $400,000 upside down during the crash in 2008. He realized that he needed to have some kind of change in his knowledge, his education, and his connections. He found Renata shortly after that, and in his first year alone, he made eight times more than he had the previous year. Ever since then, Bill has just had incredible success. He's now done over 130 deals. You know, he's grossed multiple seven figures in real estate. He's a pit team member. He's a marketing leader, and we are very grateful, very fortunate to have Bill Predeman as our trainer today. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Bill Predeman on the line. Good morning, Bill. How is your morning going this morning? Abdi, my man, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly well. Thank you for asking. I'm doing great. Awesome. I will put my video on. There we go. <clears throat> Good morning. Thanks again for that awesome introduction, brother, and uh, for taking care of this call every morning like you do and, um, you know, just lining things up. And, uh, you know, congratulations to you on your success, too. Uh, yeah, just awesome what you're, what you're looking forward to doing. I'll look forward to talking to you a little bit more about that. And, um, you know, you're leading by example, uh, and it's just powerful. And um, more the reason uh, that, that uh, Michael has you on this call as, uh, as the host. So I really appreciate what you do. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for what you've been able to accomplish and just keep it up, man. That's great. Appreciate it. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Let's see where we're at. Oh, we're only at 60. So, um, you know, go ahead and reach out to uh, some of your folks out there. Let your team know. Let your friends know. No IMAs left behind, like Michael likes to say. Hopefully we can get up into that 80 or so range by uh, the next few minutes. And uh, we're going to kick this off. So I'm going to chat real quick. Um, cool, cool, cool. I'm not going to. Okay, let's see. I'll throw in my cell phone number there, you guys, 760. That's weird. Where did we go? 760-533-3141. So if you're listening, it's 760-533-3141. And if you are watching the webinar, it's up in the chat. Uh, as you guys know, if you have a, um, if you have a, uh, question or a thought or a comment or something you want to uh, talk about uh, that has nothing to do with um, my training, have at it. Uh, just type it in there. I've got some points that I will, uh, we'll discuss today, but um, it's more important that you guys uh, get your stuff covered. That's important to your business and what you're doing in a day-to-day -day world. And sometimes we can only assume what it is that you guys are looking to hear. And so, if you, you know, come across something in your business, uh, real estate or otherwise, uh, marketing, um, Renatus, your education, whatever it is that you um, want to discuss or want to question or whatever, then uh, at least we can um, cover that. And that's probably what somebody else in the, uh, on the call also wants to talk about. So, or has come across. All right. So let's see. We're going to, so a lot of times you guys, I, I'm going to, I like to touch on, um, I like to touch on uh, kind of the actual how-to steps, like the doing it steps. And I know Michael, um, you know, Michael has, is just incredible the way he trains and same with Christian and they typically have something. I, I, I really liked Christian's last couple trainings, you know, obviously that's kind of a how-to um, really working on that, that three-way call. Uh, it's pretty powerful. 
Um, and so that's kind of a, an example and some role playing that he was doing there and stuff like that. And then Michael, of course, is so powerful and so good at, um, you know, really uh, getting the pertinent information out to you in a way that is um, understandable and manageable and, and readable and legible uh, through all the trainings he does using the, um, the share. So um, today I'm going to go a little bit over into some mindset, I think, um, a little bit of mindset and basically where I'm at. And so I was thinking about this this morning. Um, uh, you know, I want to, so welcome to the call, all the new people. Welcome to uh, the call, people that keep coming every single day like me. And uh, we just keep plugging away and doing this and, um, and all the people in between, right? So if you're new, uh, if you're relatively new, um, glad you're here. This is the place to be uh, along with your Thursday nights and all that stuff. But um if you're not new, uh, this is the place to be. Uh, this is where other people will see your leadership, uh, just like Bob was just saying, uh, being a doer, doing the things that you need to do, no matter what your success level uh, and where you're at. With that, um, you know, I was thinking about this is uh, like where the difference between like just even me or uh, I guess people earning a certain amount of earnings with the comp, uh, with the earnings plan here in Renatus um, versus those not earning quite as much or, or anything where they want to be yet with the earnings plan. I'm going to quickly turn my fan on. Hold on. Uh, don't go anywhere. Cool. Um, So it's interesting when I got started uh, in 2016 as um, back in the marketing, right? So uh, if you remember, well, some of you don't know, but um, you know, there was a time frame. there was five years from when I first saw Renatus, um, from when I left Renatus in 2011 uh, as a full-time marketer or even, even a, a leader in the community and things like that and really paying my putting my time in to when, um, to when 2016 came around and I jumped back in uh, full boat. And so when I look back at 2016, guys, listen, so for those of you who don't know, and even if you do, you might want a refresher. So I, w I enrolled in Renatus at the end of 2007, started, uh, got my education in 2008, uh, the very first part, just, you know, basically right at that holiday time, right, right in the transition there. And um, in that time, I went right into real estate. That was the reason I joined Renatus. That's the reason I bought the education. And then I applied the education as fast as I could. Um, and, um, and so I did get into the marketing. What I found, and I'm going to touch on this, is that you, you may find this too, uh, most likely the fastest way to money in this system that Bob's created is the marketing. There's no question. It's earn while you learn. And so I was just trying to earn by learning. <laughs> uh, I was trying to buck the system. And what I found was that short sales back then was the, was short sales back then was as popular as fix and flip and wholesale is right now. It's this, the mainstream strategy, right? And maybe auctions. But even back then buying an auction wasn't even that powerful just because there was so much inventory and there was no one rebuying the houses really. You couldn't wholesale your auctions. You had to buy an auction to flip. Anyway, fast forward. So, so, so what I found is that real estate was taking me time. I was not making the money I wanted to in real estate fast enough. And the marketing actually paved the way. Now, I didn't go full. I didn't go full blown marketing. In fact, I didn't market, do any marketing, bring anybody to meetings or any guests or anything. I didn't even know much about it at all. Um, I wasn't even paying attention. It wasn't on my radar at all in the beginning. <laughs> of 2008. But when I wasn't making money and I decided to look at it a little more seriously, um, the fastest way for me, I didn't do any advertising. I didn't do any drop cards. I didn't do any street signs. I didn't do anything. I just brought warm market. I brought 12 people to the meeting in a matter of 45 to 60 days and four of them enrolled um, in 2008 when no one could get money. So it was, it was pretty cool. And, and that, that extra 18000 that I made in earnings um, back then actually gave me the breathing room I needed to, um, to really 
uh, close my next few deals. And over the next four or five months, I closed like 13 short sales in a row. And that's how I combined with the marketing and the real estate. I made um, the, those funds in my first year. So um, I became a leader, you know, through action, through doing real estate and doing the marketing. Now, I wasn't a full blown marketer. Like I wasn't making the 50 grand a month or anything like that that people were making. I was having a few sales. All of my sales, you guys, were retail sales. All right. So um, let, let me get to the point here. So um, for the next several years, uh, real estate was my main focus. Uh, marketing was a big part of it, but only for my real estate. I was, there were so many more people that I was, my real estate business was growing in the marketing, but I wasn't even the one that was doing much of the marketing. Most of the people on the team were um, already there or where other people were marketing and not doing as much real estate. And so a lot of those people would come in and they'd want to do real estate and they knew that I was doing real estate. So we ended up partnering together either with money or deals or whatever. And so um, the, the power of the community for your real estate investors, when you're inviting people to the meeting, the meeting, I, I guarantee, I know I can't guarantee uh, that's not uh, compliant. I can tell you from experience, um, not only mine, but many others that I work with that attending as many opportunity, um, as many meetings and events as you can all month long, building relationships with the community will, will grow their business faster. It is an automatic organic network for, for, for real estate investing. Um, so if people are looking for a place to do real estate, not only do they get the education, it, this is another sales point, this is another benefit, this is another value add that Renatus offers and separates us from anywhere else. So there's a couple tools you can use, um, tidbits you can have for your marketing. Now look at, after all of this, <clears throat> in 2011, I take this break, um, long story, there's some reasons behind why um, I didn't leave, but I, I, I was no longer active, okay? I kept up my IMA status, I kept my five-star status, and I um, paid that every year, but I didn't go to a single meeting for five years. And um, 2016, I re-engaged with the opportunity to market Renatus and get a part, become a part of this uh, team again here. And, um, and even then, right, so, so remember, I knew what I was getting into. I was not new to it. I had real estate experience and I had um, marketing experience. I understood it. I went to the meetings and I knew what I was going to do. Even then, I did not take massive action, right? I didn't limp in. I was 100% committed. Um, I promised myself and guaranteed myself that I would go to every meeting. I would get up on leadership. I would get in front of the room. Um, I was qualified to do that. Um, I was bringing guests to the meeting. I started with Craigslist. And that was my only, we don't do that anymore. Obviously, it was posting on a job, a job space. Now, of course, in, in acting in my own compliance before there was compliance, I was always um, letting everybody know that it wasn't a job, but I was still nonetheless posting in a job section. There, there, hence there, it's not compliant, so we don't do it. But that was my only source of leads other than three foot rule slash warm market within my, within my daily routine. Okay. So even, in, even when I know that I'm hundred percent committed, um, and even as a leader, even as a, I wasn't a national leader yet. I wasn't on the pit yet. Um, I was simply a leader within the Scottsdale community. Right. And I was a seasoned real estate investor. Uh, from direct product to the product. All that being said, now for you, for the new people who don't have, it doesn't matter. Listen to what I'm getting at is, is I was a hundred percent committed yet. I didn't do crap. I did not do what was necessary. I made $30,000 in 2016, give or take in the marketing. Okay. Now for some people, it's a lot of money for even me. It's a lot of money. I don't, don't get me wrong. Right. But it, it wasn't what I was capable of, right? It was slow. It was a process, right? And, and it's a starting point. So I'm not saying 
you know, whatever your goal is five star and then make 10 grand or 20 grand or 30 grand this year, whatever. Perfect. You don't need to make a hundred thousand dollars in your first year. It doesn't happen. Those results are not typical, right? But you want to exceed what you're doing. You don't, you don't want to be average. You don't want to be typical. You've heard Michael say that. What are you capable of? Right? So, so look at, um, the opportunity for you right now is to take what Michael's teaching you, Christian's teaching you, I'm teaching you, and, and Dane is teaching you on these days, along with all of the other, and I say teaching, I, we're just sharing information, you guys. We're just sharing experiences. We're sharing what we know um, in some way that we try to present it so you understand it better. We're only doing this so that we can, our, our experiences can benefit you, right? The, the whole goal is to get to where we are faster. Right? When I talk to my real estate people, follow me on this, you guys. I think this is powerful. I've got a few points I'm going to make here, but listen. Um, you know, when anybody ever is in front of a room and the, what they're trying to do is, they're, you know, when you hear share secrets and all this stuff, they try to, um, the point is to share with you the things that they had to go through so that you don't have to go through them so you can get to where they are faster. I don't care what it is. So when I talk to my real estate investors that are looking to do this, I can share with them with a matter of fact that not only my experiences, but the experiences of others in the room will help them to get where they want to go with less mistakes, losing less money and doing it twice as fast. Right? When I tell people, listen, in 10 years, 11 years, I have, you know, 15 grand of, of gross rental income coming in. You know, um, my wife and I net, I don't even know, three to $5,000 a month or so in passive income from our rentals. We have, um, you know, We've accumulated 15 doors, all this stuff. We've done 100 deals. We've made all this money, whatever it is. But it took me 11 years. I mean, a lot of people can do that faster. And, and in fact, you could do it with less stress. You could do far less flips and be in far better wealth creation mode than I have been, especially with velocity banking, the ability to do subject to take over properties and own rentals and pay them down. That should be your goal, right? We all talk about that. And you use your marketing as your income, not your flips, right? So, um, so you go back to 2016 and I go at this thing and I use Craigslist, right? And then, um, I started to build a team cause I was five star qualified and I, um, and I was building my team slowly. And so, um, when I look at it, um, and I look at what's possible and what I could have done, um, it was weak in comparison. It was weak in what's possible, right? The opportunity that you guys have every day is to take massive action, okay? So if the mindset is this, like the only difference now, and I think last year made over six figures doing this right. Now this year, um, I'm almost to six figures already. So hopefully doubling what I made last year. Um, and, and, you, and, and I'm just one example. I'm, I'm not even, you know, in the top whatever, I don't know, number of income earners, right? I'm definitely not in the top five and I'm definitely not the number one income earner. So, uh, you know, you listen to some of these other folks, uh, Dane Clark included, and, um, and, and you look at what they're doing is that um, they've, they've made a difference in a commitment in what they're doing. So let me explain. Um, in 2016, uh, now, I still do real estate, but I, um, I did take a step back to add this into my, all these events into my routine, right? I, I got rid of hockey. I stopped playing hockey on Thursday nights, naturally, because our meetings are Thursday nights. Um, I got rid of a couple other things in my life, um, and then um, in order to fit this in, and then, um, so whatever you're doing, I highly recommend. You, you, it's not even a recommendation. I mean... If you want the success that you know that you're capable of and you want to em emulate and you want to follow in the footsteps of some of your pit members and your pack members and the top income earners in the country, um, you have to fit in, you know, every meeting, every super Saturday, every, every intensive, that's two Saturdays a month, plus a property tour or two, plus every Thursday night, plus calls, right? It's just a fact. I mean, this is an event driven business. It's not a lot of time, but it's a 20 hour part-time job. I don't care how you look at it. All right. If you want the success, in my opinion, that you want. Now, with that said, um, when I look at 2018 and 2019 compared to 2016 and 2017, 
um, there's a process. So everybody's going to go on their own curve. There's some sort of fate to it, whatever you want to call it. It just is what it is. But there's a reason that you look at Juan and Jordan. They've been with us for two years. They're averaging, I don't know, $30,000 a month right now. Um, they are growing their team like crazy. They have 30, 35 stars on their team. Um, and there's a reason for it, right? And, and, and there's, a, there's a difference even in myself between the last two, this last year and now and the first two years doing this when I was 100% committed. So in your, in your heart, in your mind, you, you've gone from your head to your heart. You've been to nationals. You've done this regional. Whatever you've done, you've committed to this business. But you still don't take the massive action. We still um, limp in. And I, and I get it. There's all kinds of reasons. I, I can't, I'm not going to go necessarily into all the reasons unless you have a question on it. Right. But, um, the difference between like today. Okay. For example, I'm walking my dog. I'm up at five 30. Um, when I say my dog, <laughs> I have, I have one that has hip problems. So he's taking some time off of walks. And then my other dog just had a major surgery, removing a couple masses from his body. So he's recu recovering with staples and stitches and all kinds of stuff. He's ready to go, but he's only been out of, out of surgery for five or six days. So I'm walking one dog this morning and, um, and uh, I probably sent out uh, a dozen texts, right? Thank you, Keely. Um, I, uh, I probably sent out a dozen texts, most of them to my team but people that haven't been around in a while, right? People that are only at essentials and not at AIT, right? And some of my folks that are five-star qualified as well, right? Um, I got a text from one of my five-star guys and read his text and texted him back, right? And um, then I reached out to some of the folks that are in the pipeline, all while watching. So my point is, is that, we go through our day, and this was me, you guys. In 2016, every single day, there was a reason not to do this. There was a reason not to call. There was a reason not to text. Now, let me clarify text in my opinion real quick. Text is easy. Text is simple. Text is not on the phone, and text is not going to make the connection that you need, in my opinion, to move someone through this process. It is, however, in my opinion, a re-engagement and a, and, a, and a stepping stone to my phone call follow-up this week, right? So if, um, yes, Cody, I will. Um, I'll tell what, that, what you said if that's okay and then I'll go over it. Um, text message is a follow-up, I'm sorry, text message is Text message is a reminder, like a doctor's note, and you're gonna to go to the you're gonna to go to the doctor that day, or uh, that dentist the next week, or whatever it is. Text message is a um, event address. Um, you know, hey, how's it going? It's a it's a quick, just touching base. For me, it's a like this morning. It's intrigue. It's inspiration. It's reifying what they've told me before and reengaging them, right? And then. But I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to wait for them to text back. If, even if they don't text back, it's a prelude to a phone call. Because this is a phone call business, right? But at least the text message is a start. Today will be calls again, right? When you hear Michael say, like, he makes calls, he's making calls. <laughs> he's not, hey, we're going to get together with my team and I'm going to make texts. Hey, let's get your list and make texts. It's not make texts. It's not send emails. It's not, you know, mail a letter. It's a phone call. It's a conversation. So every single day in 2016, I made excuses not to make calls. I made a few calls and look what happened. I had a few results. My results sucked in the marketing in 2016. And I made 30 whatever grand. Sucked. Okay, we're gonna pause right there and we're gonna talk real quick to Cody. Um, can you do a cold market at the grocery store approach? Um, so check this out, folks. Number one, let's remember three foot roll call, cold market when someone is not calling you and you are calling on them, okay? When you're reaching out to someone, three foot rule or cold market or both, um, 
the number one object that you have in mind is not to invite someone to a meeting. It is not to talk about Renatus. It is not to um, make an offer uh, to get started or anything like that. It's, it's simply an intro to any type of interest that you have with them. It's, it's possibly providing a solution, but more importantly, providing a connection. So, you know, it's hard to imagine a scenario at the grocery store, right? Um, I, I got to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm not one who is walking through the grocery store and is on purpose, and I'm going to get to being on purpose uh, in just a minute where's where I was going, but is on purpose at the grocery store to talk to someone to invite them and get their information. But I'm going to give you my scenario uh, in that scenario and my belief of what could happen and what should happen um, if I was. Um, I am on purpose at this time at when I talk to you, um, when I meet new people in my business every day for three foot rule for me, like when it comes to real estate investors, agents, so on and so forth. But um, so here's, here's where I'm at at a grocery store, right? So if I'm, if I'm picking, you've got, there's gotta be something to break the ice. You can't just walk up to a stranger and be like, Hey man, have you ever thought about investing in real estate? Right? So Typically, if you listen to another pit member, Chris McIntosh, he says this, he says, listen, um, he's talking to someone that's in a job position of some sort, right? So he, he might be on the purpose at the grocery store with the teller, uh, not the teller, but the, the checkout lady or the bad guy, right? Or the manager or the stock boy. And, and so at that time, he's like, hey man, you know where, he may on purpose just go, do you know where, uh, what aisle the, 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 I don't know, the can of, cantaloupe is right and and so he the person's going to answer him and then at that time he's pulling out his phone and he's going hey um dude you're doing a great job you know he might compliment him um i love you know i love what you're doing here it looks like you're working pretty hard you know is this something you uh, plan on doing forever is this your forever goal are you working right now are you going to school what are you doing is this what you want to do for a career are you looking to get up into management or what like he'll break the ice he'll ask a few questions and then the person the person's going to answer whatever they want. Most people are going to say, no, I'm not going to be a teller or a checkout lady the rest of my life or a bad guy or grocery stalker or whatever. You know, maybe the manager is like, yeah, you know, I've been doing this a while. You know, I, I really like my position. And he doesn't care what the, what the answer is. His next question is, that's awesome. You know what? Um, you know, do you like what you do to the, whatever it is? He may ask one more personal question about what it is they're doing. But then his second or third question is simply, you know, have you ever thought about um, you know, creating some sort of financial future for you, no matter what you end up doing, um, or, or to supplement your management position here by investing in real estate or looking at some financial options. Um, and he may run right into it and go, you know what, because that's what I do. If that interests you, um, have you ever thought about that? Right. And then they're going to say, yeah, I thought about real estate. Of course. Yeah. You know, I watch the shows. He might even ask you if you ever watch those investing shows. You get my point, right? Whatever you're, you're prepared, you're on purpose. So you're prepared for this. This, you're not making this up. If you're going to the, if you're going to a place to do a three foot rule or to do a cold market approach, the only purpose is to get their name and number and create intrigue and get some sort of common ground with where they're going to tell you, yes, I'm interested in real estate investing, financial literacy, paying off debt, getting my student loan paid for, whatever it is. So you got to get to that point where they say that. In the meantime, your phone's out, your contacts is up, and you go, great. Listen, i got to get these groceries home. i got to keep my shopping going. you got to get back to work. But give me your information. Give me your name and number. I'll send you a follow-up real quick uh, text, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get on the phone together next week. And that's it. So he's putting their contact info. They're putting their contact information into his phone. Now, I don't do this. I have not yet done it. I may start doing it um, for more pa massive action. But this is a way, if you're, at the, if you're at the grocery store, this is how I would approach somebody, um, right? And if it's not somebody in a job situation, then you've got to strike up a conversation, right? Um, you could wear like a t-shirt, right? If you guys see this t-shirt, uh, right? The future is vegan. That's a, uh, that is a um, weird t-shirt and it might dry up, draw up some conversation. So if not, you may have to say, you know, you may have to ask them if they know where something is or ask, look in their cart and go, hey, have you, how do you find that particular item to taste or to, is it healthy or whatever the question is. So you strike up a conversation, they're going to be telling you about their groceries. That's not weird. They're going to say, yeah, you should try it. It's awesome. 
and you're like, cool. And, you, and then you're like, you know, hey, what do you, what do, you do, you know, for a living or whatever? You know, you've got to get to that point where the first questions are, you know, you've got to break the ice with, with the, if the, they're not working there, no matter where you are, Starbucks or whatever, you're like, ah, you know, you've got to break the ice. I hate standing in these lines. Isn't it crazy what we pay for coffee? Or isn't it pay, crazy what you're paying for that box of cereal? It, right off the bat, they're gonna answer. Um, it always seems like, you know, it, it, that would be great, right? Imagine if you're, and I'm gonna get back to my training, but this is awesome. Like, just think about it. If you go with a money question, now you can lead right into money. So imagine if you're at the grocery store and you look at a box of cereal in someone's cart and you go, is it not crazy how much cereal costs these days? And they're gonna say, yeah. It's like, oh my God. And if you've got kids, you talk about how much it costs to feed your kids every time. If you're single, you know, you're like, oh my God, I used to be able to go out and get a six pack, a freaking couple burgers and some steaks and stuff. And I walk out in 10 days, 10 bucks. Now it's $30 and I haven't even got one meal. Whatever it is, you strike up a money conversation, they're going to agree with you. They're going to agree with you with the price of groceries. Then you can go, um, seriously, you could ask a question. Don't you wish it was a way... Um, do you ever think about ways that you could supplement what you make so this would be a non-issue, right? You could go right into that. Don't you wish, if you're at Costco, don't you wish you could just come into Costco every single day and just buy whatever you want and not worry about the checkout item? And they're going to say, absolutely. You know, I wish money wasn't an issue, right? And you could say, and then you can break it, you know? Have you ever thought about, I don't know, owning a business at home or perhaps supplementing what you do or getting involved in real estate? Have you ever thought about any of those things? The reason I ask, don't even get, it's a weird question to go from grocery. So you go, the reason I ask is that's what I'm doing. That's what I do for people is I actually share with them um, how they can supplement what they make and actually start a business from home or, you know, one of those, one of those solutions, right? I don't obviously have time right now, but if you're interested, I can send you a quick link, you know, in a day or two. And, and if you want to give me your information, something like that, you've got to have a script. You've got to practice this and you've got to make it so it's natural when you go there, right? Again, want to know why I don't do it? I don't know it that well. I don't study it that way. I go a different route, right? I'll tell you this, and this is part of my training, you guys. The more that you do this, the more people you talk to, the faster, the easier it is. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person and you will quickly learn how to overcome objection right in the grocery store. I guarantee Chris McIntosh, you guys, this is natural. He did $175,000 doing three foot rule last year. So he gets it. Like for him, it's second nature. Everybody he's talking to, he's not, he doesn't even care what they do for a living. He's there to gather information so that he can invite them to a meeting in the future, that he can follow up with them with a text and then a, a, maybe a link and then perhaps a phone call, right? Um, no problem, Cody. I think it's, you just have to go to your, uh, to your thing and go everyone. Uh, maybe it's just me. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. If, if you look down at your chat, it says two, and then you have options at the, the button where it says two, it said could be to everyone or to someone personally or whatever. So you have choices of who you can send it to. All right. Um, awesome. I, I love it, Keely. Keely says she's all ears. So here's here's what I'm getting at. So look at look at mindset, guys. Is the 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 difference between even myself two years ago for the first two years and this this last year and now this fourth year uh, in the marketing is on purpose, right? And it's not only on purpose, but it's taken action. And so every day to me, when I can easily be doing. Um, and even if I do more real estate that day um, or more personal stuff that day, then I still have to fit in the marketing. Marketing, the, 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 the marketing, the follow-up, the continuous follow-up and the re-follow-up. And I was talking to one of my guys today on the, when I left him a message on the phone is that it's easier to give birth than it is to raise the debt. And it's pretty simple to go back to old leads. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that makes us feel good, but it's, it's, it's dragging people through the mud, right? These are people that have seen the information and they can't get out of their own way and the timing isn't right. So we're going back and we're spending time on it, which is fine. Continuous follow-up is important. Invite them to the bigger events. You know, if you had a connection with someone, regroup, you know, reconnect, tell them how much you love them 
and that you really connected with them, you really thought it was perfect, whatever you wanna do, but that is not your marketing. If it worked that way, we'd all be fine because we all got hundreds of leads that didn't go through for us, right? You gotta get new leads. You gotta talk to new people. You gotta bring in new blood. It's easier to raise the dead, I'm sorry, it's easier to give birth than raise the dead. One of my mentors back in the day who used to make 50 grand a month doing this uh, during the old month company days taught me that, right? So, um, <clears throat> so mindset, right? So uh, the, the only, the thing that I see differently for where I'm going now is, is this and how it gets there, right? Is, is this, is that, um, There's no question that, so I was thinking about this this morning. I gotta, I gotta imagine what it's like, again, to be um, in your shoes with this, with this scenario of being, you know, just getting started again, um, you know, being here for a little while. I don't care how long it's been, it doesn't matter. And, 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 and you're not where you wanna be, you're not five star yet, or you just got started in what it is. So number one is, step number one, you guys, please make your list. Make your list, look at, shoot for 200, but you don't have to put 200 down, right? Unless your five stars telling you to put 200 down, that's fine. Do whatever your five stars asking you to do, right? <clears throat> but in the meantime, make your list and go, uh, that's awesome, Chuck. Chuck is so powerful, you guys, uh, unless you think like Jesus, and if you do, you will get followers awesome. Okay, um, totally agree, right? Um, Make your list and make a new list. If you've already made a list, go check it twice, just like Santa Claus, right? And, and what you do is come up with the first five <clears throat> and then come up with the, an, an additional 10, the people that are most important to you. <clears throat> you know, Juan and Jordan look at the people that are on your list when you're new and ask for your first <clears throat> 10 people or your first five people and they want the ones that are most capable. I, I, I mentioned this the other day. There's a certain point when we're in the beginning and we're dealing with cold market because we don't know anybody, nobody lives here, um, nobody lives where I live, there's no meeting where, where my warm market is. Whatever excuse we make for our warm market, we don't do it, so we're dealing with cold market, right? The thing is with cold market, it's a process, right? And we know that cold market is gonna take a lot of time and it's gonna take a lot of numbers. It's a numbers game. It doesn't need to be a numbers game. When you work with people that are qualified people, that are able, right? So that they have the A in there, the willing, the raw, ready, willing, and able, right? Ready, able, and willing. The able means they can fund. When you look at your list and you go, I know this person has a good job. I was just talking to a guy who's quitting his job, going to his warm market, he's going out there, it's near a meeting, and he's gonna spend the next 30 days bringing his warm market to meetings, right? And I'm asking him right out. I'm like, if you're gonna do this, look at, you need to work with the people that are able. People can be ready all day long and willing to do this all day long, but if they can't fund, you get burnt out. You get burnt out on people who cannot fund. And then it's frustrating. And then you, you slow down and you have less belief, you have less drive, you have less resolve, and you get frustrated. Work with the people who are not gonna complain about it. Work with the people who are not going to um, want to do it but can't do it, right? You can work with them too. Don't get me wrong. You're building your, your list, but they're going to take time. But set yourself up for success by saying, hey, I know Jimmy. He owns a freaking business. I know he has some cash, right? He owns his own house. She has a car. Um, she has a college degree. Whatever it is, they have the capability. I know this person just bought a car recently, so they must have some sort of credit so they could fund if they needed to right? You've got to set yourself up with the fastest way to succeed. And then you could drag people along in the future when you're already where you want to be. If you're not making any money, it's difficult for you to wait for someone who's never going to be able to fund for a long time, right? Totally. We, I was burnt out. I pressed on regardless, but look how long it took me. I should have made the pit my second year. But I did the same exact thing in my first year. You wanna know what got me, got me $72,000 in, in my second year, back in 17, was the fact that I did Craigslist again, and then I had a warm market already, 
which was my, not even a world market, I had a team. So I had team sales because I was working with my team and then I had my, my same old Craigslist. And right away, all I made was 70,000, right? I still dealt with hundreds of people that year that did not fund because they couldn't. And then my team was following me and they were dealing with hundreds of people that year that couldn't fund. And where I found my funding on my direct sales was one market typically and, and half a Craigslist. It was half one market and half Craigslist. And I could have doubled it if I went. And if I would have went to my team's warm market faster, way better. The next six months for me is going to be spent with my warm market, either my own warm market and the people that are on my team willing to give me their list and work on their list, five star or not, right? And that's it. I'm glad we are not using Craigslist anymore. I miss Craigslist. I got some of the greatest people from Craigslist, but you can get some of the greatest people from anywhere. Most importantly, you can get some of the greatest people you care about the most around you are the people in your phone and on your Facebook. But we don't do it. Let's think about this, why we don't do it, right? So if you think about <clears throat> vegan is the future and it's got an alien on it, right? It's a foreign concept to everyone. The fact, I'm, and I'm not here to preach veganism. I don't care what you eat right? If you ask me, I'm going to tell you, um, if, uh, you know, I will definitely voice my opinion when it, when it comes to it, but, um, I'm not here to, to tell people to be vegan, but, um, but when you, when you think about it, it is, um, it is the same, right? The, uh, and what I mean by it's the same, we're talking about 99% of America is in a rut. They're in a financial rut. It's a fact, right? I'm not gonna go through this. We already know that. That's why you're here, right? We know the statistics. It doesn't get better. It gets worse, right? Ron just texted me this morning and um, the average, uh, oh my God, what was it? This is crazy. I gotta read it real quick. Um, uh, Sixty to sixty-nine year olds in debt total over two trillion dollars. <laughs> How's that for a stat? Two trillion dollars of debt just provided to people sixty to sixty-nine years old. Right? You think they're in good shape? No. So we understand that financial literacy is important, and that real estate investing is is the the best shot we have as the layman, as the ordinary individual, to get wealthy. Right? It's not creating apps. It's not, you know, creating some IT startup. It's not being a CEO of Fortune 500 company. And it's not lawyers and doctors that make a crap ton of money and then go invest it and make a ton of money and put their money to work and put all of their money to work when they make all this extra money. Right? That's not us. Right? So, um, with that being said, we are talking to 99% of America who can't wrap their head around it. Right? They, they cannot wrap their head around the fact that you want them to invest in real estate. They know, it, they know it's important, right? People know that McDonald's is not healthy. People know, they understand that boxed preservative foods are not healthy. They understand that a salad and that vegetables and fruits are healthy. They're not convenient, they're not fast, they're not filling, they don't taste nearly as good. Uh, you, can't, you can't control your children with these foods, <laughs> right? You can't bribe them with these foods, right? All right, Lee, Bill, we are so ready to get serious about uh, uh, this marketing. With the interest we've seen from just passive marketing, just think of what can happen. Yeah, I like it. Let's not be ready, Lee, let's just go. That's why you and I are going to talk this afternoon. That's awesome. Um, so when, I, when, we, when we think about what we're trying to convey to these folks, okay, we're trying to get this message across. Um, it, is a foreign, it is a foreign concept. They desire it, but they don't, they don't know well enough. They don't have enough information, and it's difficult to change. 
right? That's why with Renatus, it's, it's gathering information. It's truly giving them three or four contacts and follow-ups where they start to believe. They start to understand it. They start to see the power of it and see the value and understand. The, the, the 30, 90 minute presentation is simply like, you know, when they read an article about food or they hear about something or they read a label or they watched a, a, a thing on Facebook. It's, you know what I mean? It's just a touch and, it, and it's easy to blow off, right? But when you start to investigate it, when you watch, start to watch documentaries, when you start to in, involve yourself in some more education for whatever reason, and typically if you think about the food and you think about the reason for it, the only reason it is, it typically you guys, is think about this, is that it's for health. It's for weight loss. It's for um, something they're not feeling well. Their doctor said they need to change their diet. They went, so something is pushing them to a point where they've got to make a difference. They're pre-diabetic, they're whatever. All these diseases and all this crap that we get from the food that we eat nowadays um, is driving people to consider changing. Some people won't. It's like smoking. Look how long it's even taken us just to get rid of smoking the way we have. You guys, so um, the same thing with finance. There has to be a point in their life where they start to look for something more. Then when they see it, they're still not going to adopt it. They're not just going to go out and say, okay, I'm all in, right? Unless they're on their deathbed, their financial deathbed, like me. That's where I was, right? They have to understand it. So you, we can share more information with them by getting them through multiple follow-ups. It, it is a continuous follow-up. And I'm not following up with people that are dead. I am to an extent. But folks, we are constantly, I'm, every single day, you hear Michael talk about it. It is, we're on. Um, we made a commitment to, um, we made a decision, rather, not even a commitment. The commitment's been there for a while. You guys have made the commitment. But it's a decision every day to do something that affects your business, which is reaching out to someone. And if you're just reaching out to all the people in your, in your group, on your text and on your team, that's good but it's not great. It's reaching out to new leads every day. That's why Bob's trying to create these, these drop cards, right? Um, so you guys can read this on the tech on the chat if you're seeing it. She loves the three foot rule. Um, okay, cool, Corey. Uh, let's see, fresh leads. Yeah, I'm just checking to see if there's any questions. This is awesome. I love the chat, you guys. Um, uh, Corey, you definitely do the three foot rule. Take take massive action. It's it, it's it. You guys, it just it does does it. Um, make sure if you have any questions, um, we can um, touch on them before we end. All right. So let's figure this mindset thing out. Let's bring it to a to a to a point here. Um. um the. Uh, the way what's possible is that the reason that we do this, I think, and train on these calls and the leadership meetings, um, and I'm sorry, the, the IMA trainings and all of the, the, the events that we try to do um, to um, develop all of our teams um, to, yeah. Yeah, sounds good, Chuck. Um, that would be great. The, the reason we do this is, um, is obviously to get all of you to come along with us, right? Like what Vanessa Huggins said on stage at nationals, um, just get in line. There's no, there's no top. It's just, you just get in line and, 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 and come along with them right at, at the pit and the pack. Um, I fully believe that, right? It's just join them. And the way you join them is just do. Like Bob's thing from Abdi this morning, great job, Abdi. And it's just be a doer, right? So we're just trying to share with you how we did what you want to do. And so um, um, please understand, in my opinion, that I try to understand where all of you are. And I think everybody does that leads and, and remember where everybody is because all of you have a family, you have a job, you have limited resources. Some of you don't have limited resources, but you might have limited resources in time. Um, 
and things like that. So all of these things mix in. Everybody has not excuses necessarily, but just factors that weigh into this. Michael says some pretty cool things when he says, stop, um, you know, stop giving attention to something that doesn't take care of you, right? It doesn't make sense. Yet we, 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 we fight for the things that are hurting us the most. And we don't fight for the things that are, can help us the most. And you understand that. You understand what I'm talking about, job and family and friends. And instead of um, the way to really help our family is through this vehicle, right? So um, the, if you could just change some of the things that you're doing so far that haven't gotten you, if, you, if, they're, if, they're, if you're on track, fine. But if you're not, and, and things you've tried have failed, and, and I don't mean fail like failure. I just mean like they're taking more time. They're not, like you're not getting to the ready, willing, and able people, right? The raw, the raw clients, the people like you and I that are ready and we're willing to do this no matter what. So then we created an able, right? Um, then um, if that's the case, then get with, make your list. Look back at your phone right? It's, you don't, we don't need, we, there are definitely people that we either approached in the past before with this, that could be approached again in a different, better way because we have more belief, we have more strength and don't be a lone ranger. And what I mean, like this was me, right? Don't try not to just do this on your own five star or not, especially if you're not five star, turn it over to your higher power, which is your five star. Let them help you with this list, but make this list and bring it to me, bring it to your five star, bring it to your leaders and, and make, build it either a script if you want to do it on your own or, or do it together on this three way or whatever you're going to do to create an opportunity for the people that you care about the most to see this information, right? What are some intrigue points I use on people already in the business? I'm not sure what that means. That's to Corey. So, uh, oh no, to everyone, Corey, uh, what are some intrigue points you use on people already in the business? I three foot rule every day and don't stress over those that can't. So she says, I three foot rule every day and don't stress over those who can't fund as I know they will when they're ready. In the meantime, I treat them as new friend and keep following up them. That's great. Yep, absolutely. I love using the three foot rule and people are in the, oh, in the business, meaning real estate. Is that what you mean? Perfect. So she's talking about being in the business. Um, so Corey, you're, you're welcome to type out an answer for that. Um, uh, I just think for me, if I'm working on the business people, people in real estate, it's a pretty easy transition. It's just because you're both sharing it and it's just a matter of, um, you know, asking what they're, if they need something to increase what they're doing, really. You know what I mean? I mean, most people in the flip business, honestly, they don't own a lot of rentals, if any. Just like people in the real estate business as realtors. Um, just like people in the trade industry. You know, if you talk about trades, even wholesalers, most wholesalers are trying to make a buck, right? There's no, there's no financial future. A lot of them don't even have their own home, right? But if they do have one home or two, then you use Intrigue as Velocity Banking and paying it down. You use Intrigue as... as um, you know, using that property as leverage and learning how to uh, buy other properties. What about subject to, you know, what about taking over payments? What about any of the things in the education that they're probably not using other strategies, you know, and as Corey says, um, no LLC using all of their own money. So she, those are all intrigue points talking about things that um, they may or may not know of, right? You know, if you're talking to a wholesaler, why, you know, do you flip some of the better, do you cherry pick the deals? Do you flip the ones that are really good? Yeah, okay, do you use your own money? Yeah, for sure, Coy, like she's just saying. So anyway, you guys, um, you guys can read that chat if you're in there. Um, you definitely, it's, not, it's never about pushing education. Um, that's not the point. All right, guys, I'll finish up with this. Um, uh, well, you know, we've got a couple action steps, um, but I, I guess the whole point I tried to make, and I hope I made it, is that, is that um, the difference between where you can start right now and where you're at, um, 
no matter where you've been, I don't care if you're one day on this, this is your second or first call or third or first week or whatever. Uh, if you've been in the business for two years or five years or one year or whatever it is, like, you know, a lot of people and you're wanting to get that five star, you're making that transition. Um, if you take a look at where I was in 2016, literally I look back and I think I made a commitment. I went to every single meeting. I flew to Utah. I learned their systems. Um, I met people. I engaged. I started putting ads on Craigslist. Um, I did three foot rule with my people, right? But <clears throat> I didn't commit. I'm still talking to people now that I should have talked to in 2016. You guys, I committed, but I did not do. The different, it's taken me two years to get through a learning curve, even at that point where it takes most people two years to get to the point where I was at. Skip all that. Skip it today. Make a decision that every day you're going to make a decision to reach out to people new and old on a regular basis and that you're sending texts with a reason to follow up on the text through a phone call, and that you're gonna make a list every single week or every single month, you're gonna revise the list, and not only are you gonna make the list, but you're gonna give the list to your five-star. Juan and Jordan are five-starring somebody every single month on their team, because that person that's serious, and if you're serious, they are making their list, they're picking out the top 10 or top five that have the money, and they're getting them in front of the information. They're taking the meeting to them. And then they are, after that meeting, they're inviting them to the meeting. It's not a one-step system. It's, it's still a four, three, five-step system, but they're putting them along, right? They're creating them as an IMA. They're getting, even if they haven't funded their own education yet, they're starting the business on a serious note. And they're doing the fastest way to marketing, the fastest way to five-star is your immediate surroundings. And you don't go it alone. If I had taken my own darn advice that I'm giving to you right now, I'd be on the pit in 2017 and 2000, instead of 2019. It's up to you. Thank you, Chuck. You're awesome. Exactly. Chuck says, I'm going to put spinach on my PB&J instead of potato chips. I love it. That's such a great analogy. You guys make it an awesome Tuesday. You're awesome, Keely. Welcome back. Let's get on the phone this week. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Everybody, you guys are freaking amazing. I am so uh, stoked that you're on this call with me. I'm glad, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited when you guys reach out. You've got my cell phone number, 760-533-3141. Um, Remember, I don't always get back to you right away. I will get back to you if you wanna call or text me a second time, that's fine if I haven't gotten back to you. 760-533-3141. Um, you're welcome, uh, Amir Amiris. Uh, that's awesome. Um, you guys are fantastic. Make it a great day. Uh, change your mindset again. Um, I know you're there. I know you're already committed, but don't just be committed. Be a doer. Take this action and, and, and just do it on purpose every day. All right, cool. All right, guys. I will say you're welcome. Cody, Christian, Lee, always good to have you guys here. I'm glad I'm bringing value. I'm glad you guys like this. Um, you know, let other people know, get them on these calls. Not just me, but Dane is awesome. Dane is absolutely, Dane and his wife are killing it. You guys get on their call on Wednesday, Christian Saturday, they're killing it. You guys, and you all know Mike Logan. So these calls are amazing. Get to your leadership, uh, invite your friends and family, uh, do it again. Wake, uh, you know, give birth to new people every week. All right, folks, I will end the meeting. I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Make it a great day. And uh, you guys are freaking awesome. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. You're welcome, Chuck. See you Friday. Can't wait.